Rick and Morty presents Jaguar. I really wish you didn't have that first page that shows a flashback to when his family was alive as if it wasn't just in the past. Because it makes a hit all the harder how grim it is that his family is gone and the next panel is Jaguar looking overly serious in a future panel where he's fighting aliens. Right away the story seems to have no charm and nothing but grimness. It'd be better off starting out with one of the main characters. And not overwhelming us with the narration exposition about Jaguar's backstory that, for all I know, I don't actually need to know, instead of at least showing us instead of telling us. The narration from Jaguar explains that his family was killed by a corrupt regime who crippled his country and locked him in a cage. Arbitrary. And he got his revenge, and it didn't make him any less angry. So with nowhere to go, he joined Deathstrike a group of top secret covert assassins. Top secret and covert are redundant with each other. The assassins are devoted to taking out the scum of the galaxy. How did a human like him meet them? He must be from a parallel earth that was lucky to even met aliens like Deathstrike's group. He doesn't care about the work as long as it distracts him from his needlessly dark and edgy past. Seriously, I want to know why his family got the fate they did instead of simply being told about it. Why was he locked in a cage? Maybe that was explained in the Pickle Rick episode. But it must have been really forgettable if I didn't remember that. I only watched that episode twice. Someone with fire for hair tells Jaguar they better get a move on because it's about to get hot in here. As she's standing near a bomb. Well, maybe I assume it's a she because of the lips and eye shadow. Jaguar gets mad at her and rushes out of the building as it explodes. So the person with fire hair wasn't on Jaguar's side because it's not like she's following him. He gets out of the water gasping and reunites with his friends, who for the most part are pretty bad names. Oh, so my first assumption was correct, and he is on his side. Then why did he curse her out and run away from her? And he said son of a bitch. It's so confusing starting out in meter res. It's there to have faster pacing, but it just starts the audience out detached and off put. And that's the last thing you want when the issue starts out with none of the main characters you're accustomed to. I feel like stories should start at the beginning and not when they just get interesting. Jaguar is teased by the cyborg pistol whip, being called Gramps and asked what took him so long to catch up with them. So why was Jaguar hired by them? He's just a human. It's not like he has special powers. And them not respecting him just makes me ask that earlier. The comment causes Jaguar to grab him and threaten to kill him. Oh, he actually gets comeuppance for teasing Jaguar after he almost died. Even if it is over the top. But maybe it's justified because he teased him so many times before this that it's a long time coming. Then someone behind him says that he had a similar idea and threatens Jaguar. So the team isn't even good friends with each other. Not even that was true of an assumption. It's already irritating enough to me that these are brand new characters with an overly serious guy who is somehow named Jaguar on Earth. But now they're gonna bicker with each other on top of that? Thankfully, Heat tells him that they've got a new job coming in who's number one on the most wanted list. Who's that? Rick? Why wasn't he always number one? How could he possibly be knocked off from number one? Rick says that's stupid because he's exhausted and they deserve a night off. Saying cream crackered instead of exhausted for some reason. It's a good thing there are text boxes telling us the names of all of these characters. He says that such a big job seems right up Jaguar's alley, even though he calls Jaguar the little guy. And when Jaguar says no, he gets smacked by a message box thrown at him, and it turns out Jerry's on the screen. He asks what Jerry did. Then there's a page full of small square panels with a title of a story, as if this is just a comedy page, like in the spring of comics all of a sudden, and not a part of the main story. Jerry complains that there's nothing to eat in the house, and asks Beth to drive him to Shoney's. She says she has to work, and wishes he would do the same. I guess she's always been so bitter that he's not working that she's always felt like lashing out at him for it, in spite of the possibility that he's been trying to get a job as hard as he can, and just can't. She's always acting like he's still unemployed willingly. Maybe the job market just sucks. Then when she leaves without him, I guess being too mad at him and in a hurry to go to work on time that she can't take him to Shoney's, and it's not on the way to her workplace. Jerry sees a portal gun, and wonders how to get it to work. It doesn't make any sense that he thinks it's voice controlled. He's known Rick for years, and I know Rick's used a portal gun in front of him before. 
And he's used the portal gun before to reunite with Doofus Rick. I guess this is taking place in a parallel universe where he never saw Rick use his portal gun before, and he never used it. Though Jerry does have a good point. Why wouldn't the portal gun be voice controlled? Yeah, someone unauthorized can make, it, make a portal against Rick's will then, if they knew what it was and what other dimensions you could mention, and what exact phrase to use. But it'd also be common sense of Rick to make the portal gun only recognize his voice. And apparently Jerry didn't think of that because he tried it anyways. Of course, that could backfire if he's in another body or his voice was directly changed, but there's no reason the portal gun should only be controllable by voice. There could simply be buttons on it as well. Jerry actually had a smart idea that Rick didn't. Maybe some Ricks considered that. Maybe most Ricks don't bother out of laziness when they could just press a button on the thing. They don't have to make it voice activated. The point is, it could be useful to him if he's deprived of the ability to use his hands. And it's in character for Rick to be so prepared. Jerry recklessly uses a portal gun to make a portal and casually walks into it without knowing where it'll lead. And of course, reality ensues a bit because he can't pay for a milkshake with Earth dollars, which is even recognized at a glance. Not to mention it was very stupid of him to expect a hot dog salesman to serve him a milkshake. He gets mad at being told no, feeling entitled to it because he has the right to eat. And then some aliens behind him say they'll feed him a good meal, with one calling a friend. I guess this will go wrong and they're sinister, because this is really convenient for Jerry and he didn't have to call him friend when he just met him. And this is a dark comedy. I really love the idea of seeing Jerry do a space adventure. It's refreshing. Okay, that alone makes this issue worth it. But it makes the beginning section of it absolutely unacceptable in its placement of the issue. It should have been after the Jerry stuff that would have eased you into the issue. Jerry's led to a place that's called a soup kitchen and a surprising extra bit of realism. I assume this place is some kind of cult that lures people in this way, right? There has to be some dark turn. Naturally, Jerry's unhappy that he can't get any milkshakes since that is the whole reason he went zone hopping. And he's told that they only have some free food that they spent all morning making. The spent all morning making part is just there to make Jerry look like a jerk. But I don't like that. He should be grateful, but the only reason he used the portal gun was to find a milkshake. Oh yeah, the portal gun runs out of battery really easily. What if he used it all up and can't get home? Well, to be fair, he has every reason to assume that Rick is smart enough to recharge his battery completely anytime he gets home with it. He has no reason to have his portal gun with only one charge left to when it's at home. Even if he just got home, he'd still plug it in. Of course, the whole story is apparently only happening because Rick was dumb enough to leave the portal gun on the kitchen counter for no reason instead of keeping it in his lab coat. Or at least locked in the garage. That's happened a lot, but happening a lot doesn't make it less forced that Rick didn't so much as learn his lesson after the first time. It's happened a lot to the point where Rick put an app on his phone that has an alarm go off and tells him whenever someone uses his portal gun on him. And who did it? I assume that Rick did get alerted to what Jerry did and is in too much danger to go after him. Either that or he's passed out drunk. That has to be it because Rick instantly caught up to Jerry one of the times he did something like this. I can't wait to find out exactly what's keeping Rick busy. Anyways, after Jerry's stomach is full, and I wish I got to know what exactly he ate on an alien planet that made even normal Earthling happy, he wishes there was a way he could repay them. So he's not too bad. Unless he doesn't want to do that, and yup, he doesn't. The alien says they're a non-profit kitchen run by volunteers, and asks Jerry if he could serve some food or wash dishes. Jerry says he doesn't want to do any of that, and says that he's sure he could find another way to repay them. To be fair, this is an alien planet, so for all he knows, they're intending to keep him there for the rest of his life. Then he farts and uses his portal gun to leave. And that gas kills not only the people in the soup kitchen, but the people surrounding it too. Even though there's no breeze connecting the building to the outside. I guess it escapes through the ventilation? He had no way of knowing that would happen. And of course, he had every reason to think Rick would be too much of a jerk to simply go get him a milkshake. Let alone not hide the portal gun on him after he even asked about that dimension. Rick was indirectly responsible for this then. By getting himself a reputation as someone who wouldn't simply get him a milkshake. Some people in the Galactic Federation find out that life signs are dropping across the planet of Plavon 6. I guess by life signs they mean heartbeats. 
And they decide to alert Deadstrike at once. Wait, so this guy looks like a Gromplamite, right? The guys who attacked Bird Person's planet for the Federation? Apparently, Deadstrike is a group of assassins that's actually employed by the Galactic Federation, not just an illegal criminal group of snipers. It's confusing because murder is supposed to be illegal. Or it is illegal and he just happens to know about it. I have a hard time believing that Jerry used a portal gun to go to some other alien place, again, when he already took a huge risk and got lucky with it working out for him the first time. I mean, he knows how dangerous Morty's adventures are, but I guess he was still desperate to get himself a milkshake and didn't want to give up. And somehow he didn't take the hint that Earth money is worthless in space. Why didn't he just portal to another Earth? He just went to this dimension because it was the last one Rick went to, I guess. He doesn't really know how to operate the portal gun, how is he supposed to know how to get to another Earth? Well, I'm sure the interface wouldn't be that intuitive. I mean, couldn't he just scroll through the list of dimensions? Couldn't he just scroll through the list of planets until eventually he gets an Earth? I wish he explained that he doesn't want Rick to find out that he used his portal gun, and of course he'd find out he used his portal gun if he went to the portal gun again and saw that the last dimension visited was an Earth instead of the one he last went to. He was already pushing it by taking Rick's portal gun and didn't want to take the risk of looking for his wallet to take schmeckles from it too, under the assumption that Rick's still too busy to stop him. Anyways, Jerry's used to Earth, so it's a bit baffling to me that we cut down an alien bar. I mean, he knows how to get to Doofus Rick's world! I just remembered! Why couldn't he just... Warp to Doofus Rick's world if he's memorized which exact dimension it is and knows how to go there with the portal gun. He'd just go there to get a milkshake. This whole plot would never happen. I guess we're supposed to believe this plot takes place before he started visiting Doofus Rick, so that would explain his complete inexperience with the portal gun. Not to mention it could be a different dimension. Okay, I just wish they explained that. He's supposed to look unsympathetic because the aliens all look annoyed with him as he's tediously whining that he deserves a milkshake for his completely non-existent hard work. How does he think he's still useful? He doesn't even like to do the chores. He doesn't even have a hobby. He says he started a vlog and some people can't handle what he has to say. And he's afraid of no one. Yeah, right. He accidentally smacks the hand of the guy about to drink beside him because he pointlessly used an arm gesture. And just as he thankfully apologizes to him, he screams when the guy is killed by a laser by Jaguar, who only killed him because Jerry's his target. Okay, but there's no reason for him to not shoot Jerry instead. I assume he missed, and hit the guy by accident. Already, there's multiple reasons this whole plot had no reason to happen, so thank goodness it's got the refreshing concept of Jerry being in a space adventure for a change, and completely unprotected. Jerry somehow brave and gets enough to call Jaguar out on calling him a worm when he's being threatened with death and just saw something horrifying. Does he still have his portal gun? He must have, so why doesn't he just portal home right now? He could shoot the portal at Jaguar and kill two birds in one stone. The bartender reveals he has a ray gun with him and wants to fight Jaguar for what he did. And Jaguar gets called and asks if Jerry had a portal gun with him because there are witnesses to Jerry using portal technology to come to that planet. Jaguar naturally says he's got his hands full. Then Rick shows up through a portal and tells Jerry off for stealing his stuff again. Jerry asks him for help because they all want him dead, and Rick somehow wastes time saying he can relate to that. Jaguar recognizes Rick, calling him Pickle Man, and they're both happy to see each other. Rick's told what Jerry did and really reluctantly saves him from a sword flying at him by pressing a button on his wrist device. He gets punched for going against Jaguar on his mission. Rick fortunately explains that as much as he's loved to be rid of Jerry, he's not dealing with the consequences of a pissed off family and having to go to his funeral. Can't he just portal to another planet instead? He doesn't want to have to deal with endless crying about how great Jerry Smith was. I hate seeing the gore, as usual. Rick presses his wrist device button to summon multiple robot arms from his back, like he's done before. It never looks like there's more than one button on that wrist device. It looks like he's pressing one green button as big as his hand, and somehow it does something different this time. Jaguar is threatened by his boss into trying to kill Rick and Jerry for them within 24 hours. He hangs up on him, and his boss plans on deploying the rest of Deadstrike. I hope they all get destroyed. I'm sorry, but I've been given no reason to like them. It was hard enough for me to get into the issue with just Jaguar. 
This is my second attempt at reviewing this issue. The first time, I gave up and put it off after the first page. Rick goes into a portal with Jerry, and Jaguar goes into it with them. And then they end up in a nice looking green place. Rick's told what Jerry did, and Jerry shows no remorse for it, and only says that everyone farts. Apparently he doesn't care about the consequences of it. Oh good, he looks upset when he's told that he killed a billion people in the process. I mean, he was told twice that he committed genocide, what was he expecting in terms of numbers? He's just now getting it? Jerry has more logic than the writer here, how could it have spread so fast? The wind doesn't move that fast across the planet. Rick says that Flavin 6's atmosphere is different, and their food mixed with Jerry's chemical components to produce a substance that was really toxic. Rick says that space ventures require research and knowledge as well. It sure is ridiculously convenient for them that Jaguar isn't trying to kill them and all of the time Rick's talking. I guess Jaguar wants to humor Rick and let him cathartically call Jerry out for what he did for him because he had a good memory with Rick before. When he threatens him again, Rick presses a button to apparently roboticize his hand in an instant. And the hand's able to shoot Jaguar in the chest with a laser. How Jaguar survived this? Usually lasers kill instantly. I guess Jaguar has a special laser-proof suit. Rick says that his honor is using his brain to invent stuff, like portal guns. Out of complete nowhere, Jaguar says that Rick had told him Rick was the only person who has infinite versions of a family, and that Jaguar's daughter wouldn't exist in other universes. That's ridiculous. Since when? I guess he told Jaguar that because he was too lazy to try to help him find another daughter. But he isn't too lazy to invent stuff all the time. Come on, that's dumb. I never imagined that was the case. Jaguar's mad at him, and Rick uses his roboticized hand and a veil of chemicals from his pocket to create a giant middle finger of rock between him and Jaguar as he portals away. Maybe if Jaguar hadn't tried to hurt Rick in his rage, he could have just gotten his daughter back by asking Rick to help him find his daughter. He has no reason not to. But he's just that mad. So he gets him off put, and Rick portals away. Then all of a sudden, because Jaguar clearly revealed he knew Rick in the bar, and followed Rick through the portal, and the bartender just told Deadstrike that they killed everyone in the bar, Deadstrike comes to the conclusion that Jaguar's working with Rick now instead of continuing to pursue his, his target through a portal, and Jaguar's accused of going broke. They don't even say that they're just jumping at any excuse they can find to bother him. Worst of all, the boss wants to kill Rick's family afterwards. That's ridiculously over the top. No wonder Rick hates the Galactic Federation. Hopefully these dead strike jerks will get killed for this, because now they're on full-on antagonists. Jerry complains that he had no way of knowing that Jerry Guar was lied to and his country was destroyed. Destroyed? Outright? Wow, that's really over the top. Jerry wishes someone would think about his feelings for a change. And Rick's naturally mad enough to wish he could just turn him in for the reward money. Jerry somehow thinks Jaguar is a reasonable person who could be bargained with after he tried to kill them both, instead of just asking Rick to give him a new daughter. So he asks if Rick's traps are necessary. Rick snarks at him for this. Why does Rick think he has a few hours of a head start? Why does Jaguar get back to them? I thought they portaled to another universe. Jaguar startles him, rustling the bushes behind him while carrying a knife, and he jumps at Rick, and then Jaguar looks at a device of his, and that device is apparently what conveniently lets him constantly track Rick down every planet they go to, after he magically stopped being kept still. Gee, good thing he has Rick tracked somehow, with the non-existent tracking device he put on Rick. Oh, he put one on Jerry's shoe. I never saw him do that! I guess it was off screen. Jerry says he's being tracked with a flashing thing on his shoe that he just noticed. How'd he ever notice it? Nobody looks at their shoes. I'm glad Jerry finally apologizes for wiping out a planet. Oh good, after Rick makes an overly long speech telling Jerry to tell his family he loves them and apologizing and revealing that he goes on adventures to ignore his own pain, he smirks when Jaguar calls out the name of his daughter and remembers his own family. So Rick was intentionally manipulating Jaguar by relating to him. That makes sense. Jaguar says he can't do to Rick's family what was done to him. Rick says that Dead Strike are just another regime that won't stop until they're all dead and they have the portal guns. So Rick talks Jaguar into teaming up with him and shoots his shoulder wound with a laser to cauterize it. And lucky for Jerry, he's given a mecha suit that lets him fight too. 
and he's naturally scared of having to kill people with it. It was satisfying to see Rick create a portal to send heat over to a freezing cold place with a monster in it, after saying, real original, in response to him saying, burn baby burn. Since the action scene has gore, it can't be visually appealing to me and make me all that grateful for seeing it. That was disappointing. Jay grinds up hit, Jerry says his stomach is hurting and he can't hold it in any longer. Rick says he might have a little weapon of destruction left in his system, and the food he ate on Flavon 6 has festered in his system for hours. So if he recalibrates his suit, he can hold the gas and launch it, creating a Dutch oven bomb. I thought it was the species of Flavon 6 itself that were killed by his farts. I didn't think it would be dangerous to literally any species. Then after Jaguar remembers his daughter and Rick saves him, with her being needless gore to see, they escape through a portal. I really hate how Jaguar stained. He threatens Rick with a gun and says that if there's a chance he can find his family again, he should help him. And thankfully he says please. Rick says that he can't promise him he can pick up exactly where he left off with his family. Why didn't he explain this to him a lot earlier? The little things get to you. He can send him to a dimension where his daughter exists, but she might not care that he's back. The Jaguar of that dimension could still be alive, so he'd have to either kill him or try co-parenting, which he hates. Rick could have done research and find a dimension where Jaguar died and sent Jaguar to that one. Though, of course, if everyone knows he's dead in that dimension, then he wouldn't be able to pick up where he left off because people would think he's dead. So his social security number would be invalid and stuff. He'd have to die with no one finding out, so he would have to kill him. The scenario of the very same episode Jaguar appeared in had Jaguar save Rick in another dimension after coming there, proving that he was able to travel through dimensions. So everyone who watched the show assumed he would find his daughter eventually on his own. Not need Rick's help. How hard could it have been to go to another Earth? Rick creates a portal for Jaguar, and actually Jay wants to cry in the shower after all this. Rick then puts his hands on Morty's shoulders, looking upset, and tells Morty to shut up for a second, and says, I never tell you how much I appreciate you because I don't want you to be a crybaby about it or to have some emotional power over me. But I just want you to know that if anything happened to you, if I never saw you again, I'd... Then he trails off, and uses the weakest excuse to get out of that awkward conversation by yelling at Morty for watching a show marathon he knew about without him, and not even having the courtesy to tape it. That made no sense to Morty. Rather than saying that he did that on purpose to get back in him for all the traumatizing adventures, which would have made a bit more sense, Morty just complains that he was ditched for three days and had every reason to watch TV, ignoring Rick's point entirely. And Rick upsets him by bringing something up again that he said he never would. Oh no, we're seeing Jaguar meet his new daughter, so is there gonna be something that goes wrong? Are they gonna die? This doesn't look like a Jaguar, so did he clean up or is he gonna get killed and replaced? He hugs his daughter and says he didn't forget about Rocket Launcher Training Day because she's all he's been thinking about. They shoot something that makes the words THE END show up. And, the issue's already over? Why would Jaguar have the words THE END be what the rocket would spell out? It can only be the happy ending that we all wanted if this was the actual Jaguar, reuniting with his daughter. He just cleaned up and dressed like the one he's replacing. Sure it's convenient for him that he found stuff that could clean up his scenes. He is holding a bag behind him that has red scenes on it, and he has a black eye and a bandaid on, so I guess that proves that he's a jaguar we know. And that's all we see of his daughter. Oh. It's disappointing that instead of revealing anything new and developing on her, finally, it's just a callback to the last time we saw her, as she just wants to do the rocket launcher with him like she wanted in a flashback. The sad thing is, this is the only way he can replace a Jaguar in the most smooth way possible because if he went to a world where his family knew their Jaguar was killed, they'd be really confused at seeing another Jaguar show up and know it can't be him. So they'd be more reluctant to accept him as a replacement. They'd already be pretty shocked at him teaching them that other universe versions of people exist. This issue is about Jaguar being sent to kill Jerry because he accidentally killed an entire planet of people just by passing gas after he got fed in an alien soup kitchen. And Rick goes to save Jerry from his determined assassin. If he had been more picky like a Jerry and went home because he didn't have milkshakes, he would have avoided this. Not to mention he could have easily just went to Doofus Rick and got a milkshake in that version of Earth. This whole plot really shouldn't have happened. I don't know why Rick left his portal gun on the kitchen counter for anyone to grab. I understand that he has to keep his spare at home, as it turns out he has a spare one, but he could have hidden it in a locked cupboard. I hate all the gore in this issue. 
I'd always prefer to see characters punch or something instead. And in a series with ray guns and aliens, there's no reason to not have them be turned into ashes with a laser. Or at least have the alien blood be a weird color, instead of ruining the appearance of the fight scenes, making them so tedious that I only want to look at the dialogue and sort of rush through reading the story. I'm thankful that the whole story wasn't focused on Deadstrike staying with Jaguar because they were unlikable and unnecessary characters. But their fates would have only been satisfying if they had been defeated in a less awful looking way that I don't want to show very much of. On the bright side, Jaguar did get his family back, even if he had to be a villain and replace a Jaguar to do it. And at least Rick didn't have to look like a bad guy by being the one to do the killing. The sad thing is, we didn't get to see nearly enough of Jaguar bonding with his daughter. One measly page is not worth it. Jerry barely got to do anything in the space adventure. And Rick showed up to save him after he just did one thing and whined the whole time. So a few pages of Jerry being on his own on another planet isn't that impressive in retrospect when he didn't have a full adventure. He just ate stuff. But technically the story is worthwhile to the series because we finally get to see Jaguar get his family back. I don't feel like it's all that worth reading though because of all the gore and everyone already assumed that Jaguar would find his family again from the show. And the beginning is a completely superfluous and off-putting bit of filler that almost made me not read the issue. Jaguar's like the shadow of the hedgehog, Rick and Morty. The only reason I gave it a chance is that I read almost everything else in the comic and I still trust this comic to be good. They should have cut out the entire beginning section with Jaguar and the aliens. And then they'd have more than enough comic space to show Jaguar spend more time with his daughter. And the issue could reassure us that he's going to actually get to spend the rest of his life there. Because as it stands, there's no actual proof that this new family isn't going to get killed too, by the same thing, if Jaguar was already really unlucky once.